is going on you guys and welcome back to the channel. Now today we have more, you guessed it, more Jeep stuff. As I told you guys, I have a big trip planned to the vineyard with this Jeep in about a month and a half. I'm extremely excited so I've got all sorts of both maintenance items and mod and upgrade stuff that I'm going to do to the Jeep to get it ready for the vineyard as well as just it's all stuff that need to be addressed anyways. So in the last Jeep video, we addressed the differential. I put all new brake pads, calipers, rotors on the Jeep. The maintenance stuff, that's no fun, that's boring. But today we are gonna do something that is fun because we're gonna be addressing the lighting situation up front. Snapchat, must be a woman. Now I've had this set up for, oh gosh, it's gotta be two years that I've had this lighting set up with the large 52 inch light bar across the top and the aux beam pods that are actually fog lights down below on the pillars. Now, in case you're not a Jeep or an off-road person, fog lights are not supposed to be up that high because they create like a shallow pattern. Up there, you want a spot pattern. Those are fog lights. I didn't know until after I had them on, so I kind of just left them on there for looks. So what we're gonna be doing is taking those aux beam fog lights and putting them on the front bumper here. I'm then gonna wire those into the factory fog light switch in the Jeep. From the factory, the Jeep had two big fog lights right here. So we're gonna clean it up inside, wire those to the factory fog light switch, if that's something I can do myself. Then we're gonna be removing the light bar. The 52 inch light bar is gonna be coming off. Hopefully that's not a pain to remove and hopefully the paint isn't too screwed up below this. I might have to buff it out, clean it up. And we're gonna be replacing the light bar with all of this. So not really that right now, that's not important. Yet Oxbeam was kind enough to send us out four of these LED pods. Now on the outside right here is a white beam pattern and in here, it's orange, so you can switch them on and off. Now, these two are spotlights, so when I put them on the Jeep up there where they're supposed to go, they'll be working functionally. Now, we've got those two there. Two of them are still in the box over here, but we're gonna be mounting them on these cool dual pillar mounts right here. Now, these just sit somewhere like this. That sits on there like that, and then we have two of the pods on there. We then run the wiring under here. That's where the mess of wires is for the light bar, for those pods. But because the wiring is such a mess under there, we're gonna be cleaning it up with this. These are battery, battery. These are battery terminal multipliers. So basically you latch it onto the battery post right there and it gives you all of these posts to clean up your wiring. Now, all the products that we're gonna be installing today on the Jeep, I'll link down in the description below so you guys can check them out. And we're gonna start by removing the two fog lights that are not where they're supposed to be. Bro, hood crop. Please don't be too tall. Perfect. Well, thank God I had my lacrosse stick on me. Works perfect. It's been a minute since I had this off. We go up like that. There's one light. There's numero dos. Now what I'd really like is for the light to sit here. Please don't be too tall. Oh my gosh, it might work. Huh, honestly didn't have high hopes. Ooh. Come on now, don't be difficult. Be good for daddy. Look, I know there's posts right here, but for some reason I don't, I don't like that look at all. No. So here's originally what I thought I was gonna be able to do. I thought I had enough room. There's a bolt hole up here. I thought I was gonna be able to mount the lights like this, have them aimed down and a little outwards. And I thought it would look pretty cool. They're kind of hidden, but this one won't go up any higher. This one, for some reason, I've got all sorts of room. But what I realized is that it looks like this fair lead right here for the winch is adjustable because there's a bolt hole up here and there's one right there. Same on the other side. So what I'm thinking of trying is removing this nut right here, or removing the whole bolt, sliding it down to this bolt hole right here to buy myself the extra room that I'll need. Because like I said, I'm not putting the lights up here where they're supposed to go. I think that looks ugly, and it covers up my Raptor lights that I have up there, which are one of my favorite features on the Jeep. And I mean, I guess as a worst case scenario, I could drill holes over here, put the fog lights out on the side like that, but, uh, First of all, I don't know if I want to drill holes in my bumper. Second, it's very, very thick. 
Damn, boy, he's thick. That's a thick ass bar. Right now, I'm gonna remove this bolt, and uh, and then we're gonna see what that buys us for room. Let's just say, thank God those bolts had never seized on them because I was expecting those things to be an absolute pain in the But the bad news is this really isn't a viable option uh, because the bolts that go through the fair lead here are, uh, are so close to the winch. I don't know if they're part of the winch mounting design, but uh, I can't get them out without completely removing this winch. So I would literally have to remove the winch plate, then remove the winch, Seems like it's more work than it's worth, and I don't really want to mess with this. I would rather have the winch bolted on strong in the working order than some fog lights. So I'm going to tighten the fair lead back up. We're going to put the fog lights to the side for now, and now we're going to work on the two pillar lights. But first, of course, we have to remove the 52-inch light bar, so that's what we're going to do now. considering this thing's been on there for a long time. Wow. <laughs> now I'm just trying to find out where the connector is. Here it is. So that I know what switch on the interior goes to the light bar. I want to show you guys, well, I'm not really proud of my wiring job, but I mean, I was probably 17 when I did this. At least, at least I was smart enough to label things. So I'm gonna trace the harness that goes to the 52 inch light bar. I'm gonna disconnect that and at least get that out of the mess. Identify the harness for the two pillar lights up here that I'm gonna keep. Those are gonna stay because I'm gonna just wire in the other two lights. And then once we sort out what's staying on the battery, we can grab the Cat5 terminals and start to mess around with that and clean everything up. One pair of pants later. Well, welcome to day two. So lots happened yesterday that I didn't film because, well, frankly, I would have been demonetized in an instant with the library of different swear words that I screamed, basically. So as I was removing the last bolt here for the windshield hinge so that we could mount our new light mount thing here. Uh, this bolt decided to snap. You can see what's left of it in there. Now the observant viewer will note that there's silicone in there because many years ago when I put on a different style mount, or it might have been when I put on the light bar mount, uh, this whatever nut cert on the inside disappeared. So did this one. Luckily that one still is there. This one uh, I don't know what's gonna happen yet because I, I have no idea. But on the driver's side, different scenario. So we have this one, we have this one, this one there's nothing, same as the other side filled it with silicone, and then this bolt snapped. Now, fortunate enough, I was able to drill out some of that side with a screw extractor, get part of it out, but then the screw extractor snapped, so that's gonna be a fun one. Uh, this one, I think I'm going to attempt to drill out today. But drilling out screws, that's not really the problem. The problem is that on this side, if that nut cert is not there, uh, then there's only one usable bolt hole when there's supposed to be four for the light mount, which I would like to use. The other side, not a huge deal if I only have two. I mean, they're only lights, doesn't weigh that much. But I might lose that nut cert when I drill out that bolt as well. So I'm in a bit of a predicament right now. So what I'm gonna try is, cause I don't know where the mounting plate that holds whatever nut certs were in here are. I don't know where that is. So I'm curious if I fold the windshield down because you can do that on a Jeep, cool. I'm curious if I fold the windshield down if I'll be able to access inside of here and I don't know, figure something out. That's really my only viable option right now. And upon reading many, many forums yesterday, I found out that this is a common occurrence, but there weren't a ton of answers as to what I could do right now. Now I'm gonna go ahead through the procedure, which is only like two bolts or something now, uh, to fold down this windshield and see if I can gain access to inside of there. I think, I, I don't know. 
Well, let's just say when you work on a 20-year-old Jeep Wrangler that drives in New England where there's salt and lots of rust, no project can be easy. And I learned this the last Jeep video where I did the brakes. It turned into a multi-day ordeal with a lot of broken parts and such. And this project, something so simple as changing up the lighting, has turned into a three-day ordeal. So what went wrong is up here on the windshield frame hinges. Now, I guess I should have done some research before I started doing this, but I mean, I had lights here before, then I had the light bars you guys saw, but I ran into some particular trouble this time as this bolt up here, that bolt, and the same one on that side, both snapped on me. Now the majority of the problems are on the passenger side here, where there's, well, un unknown to me, a threaded plate behind here. And that's where these bolts bolt into. And when I took these bolts out, when I took the light bar off, the plate fell. And I spent more time trying to get that plate up into position and I just couldn't do it because all you have are these little access holes from where the bolts go and that's it. And there's no way to actually go in through the speaker housing here. This is all blocked in. So that was a terrible, terrible ordeal. So now even though both of the front bolts snapped on me and I wasn't able to get them out and I'm done fighting with them. Three on each side is gonna be plenty to hold this frame up. I got some nice new stainless steel hardware that's gonna go in there. I'm gonna make sure to put lots of anti-seize on them so that I don't run into this problem again. I'm gonna clean this entire area up. Probably not gonna worry about that rust too much because it's just starting to bubble. There's a gasket that goes over this. You saw me remove the old one. Clean this all up so that the gasket sticks nice. And then we can finally get the new brackets on here and put on the new lights. little slight problem I ran into. Uh, once again, coming up short. So the bolts that I got, the nice stainless steel bolts, which were as long as the bolts that were holding the light bar on, just barely shorter. These are the longest ones that I could find at the store. <sighs> are too short, so they're not threading in. So I have these two bolts that I had just laying around here. They're very long. Those are just holding the plate in place so that I don't lose it again. God, that would be terrible if I did. These are holding the plate in. Looks like I'm gonna have to go to the store, a different store, see if they have longer bolts. But now I'm gonna start on the other side, do the same thing that I did here, get what bolts I can started. I'm gonna have to figure out something with this front one because there's, I couldn't drill the whole thing out, so. I got these lower mounts off and replaced the bolts. I have three bolts in this. Now it looks like a good time to put on the pod lights themselves. So we're gonna get those on there, mock them up, not tighten anything down. And then we're gonna move on to the wiring. up the bottom ones quickly roughly 
I plugged back in, put back on the battery. Now I'm gonna hit the switch on the inside and see if they work. Battery's not making connections. So. All right, now it's actually plugged in. Let's give it a shot. Again, I don't know which. <laughs> Idiot! <laughs> What a pain in the balls the wiring was, but the lights are both on the Jeep. I think they look amazing. No, I haven't cleaned any of this up yet, but they're all wired up. It's the switches in here. That one runs my reverse lights. That one's blank. These are the lower pods. These are the upper ones. I'll also include a link down in the description for the switches that I used up here because I know in the Jeep TJ, there's not a whole lot of room to run switches. These have worked awesome for me and they look really cool. So now we wait till it gets dark out. We can actually test these things out.